You know what that sound is? That is the sound of metal rubbing on metal, which when you're worried about your brakes, it's not a good sound to have. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how to replace the brake pads on a second generation Tacoma. I assume it goes pretty similar for all the other Tacomas as well. Um, pretty much any disc brake that you work on is actually super easy uh, and you can save a decent amount of money doing it. So let's get started. Okay, so I have the replacement brake pads there. The passenger side of the truck is jacked up. We'll put a jack stand, stand underneath there just to be safe. And then first step is to remove the tire and then we can replace the brake pads. So the wheel's off and I'm ready to replace the pads, but let me show you what bad pads look like and how you'll know when you need to replace them. So you can see the rotor right here. This is all still good rotor, but on this side, there's like almost no pad left. There's no actual brake pad left. It's pretty much just rubbing on metal. There's a little bit of pad left on this side, but if you spin it, you can hear it grinding. And that's just the metal on metal grinding and that's what you don't wanna have. And if we were to compare this side with one of the brand new ones, look at how big of a difference there is in how thick that brake pad is. So significant difference, they definitely need to be changed. Let's keep going. On the brake caliper, we have two retaining pins, one up here at the top and then one down here at the bottom. We're gonna have to take both those retaining pins out and then there's one retaining clip right here that just keeps the brake pads in place. Uh, once we have the pins out, as well as this little retaining clip, we'll get a screwdriver and we'll push these pistons open wider so that there's room for the new brake pad to go into place. So when you're pushing these out, you just wanna make sure there's enough room for the new brake pads to go in, because the new ones are significantly wider and they're gonna need more space to go in. Make sure once you have one side done that you keep leverage on the side you just barely did, because otherwise if you were to just start onto this side, what's gonna happen is the pistons are gonna come back out from this side, it's just gonna push it over and it's not gonna open it up the way that it should. So as you're going through and pushing each side, you just wanna make sure that you have some tension on each one of these, both on the right side and the left side. You don't wanna do this on the new ones because you can ruin the brake pad, but because we're replacing the brake pad on this already, it doesn't matter what happens to the older ones, they can get a little bit dinged up. And then once that's open, you can just slide each brake pad out, just pay attention to which one is on which side because that will matter. They are a little bit different. So you can see on this guy, that's where all that grinding came from. So there's just rubbing straight metal on metal, not what you wanna see. So now that I have the brake pads off, I'm also gonna take the rotors off and I'm gonna turn those. Um, turning it, basically what that means if you don't know is it just shaves off any uneven wearing on the rotors as well as any warping or anything like that. The reason it's a good idea is because once you put those new brake pads in, if there is any uneven surface on the brake rotors or if there's any warping, it'll cause those brake pads to wear down faster which means you have to do this process all over again. So it's like 15 bucks a rotor if you take it into like O'Reilly's or AutoZone or something like that, they have the lathe that can turn it. Uh, so I'm gonna do that as well. I'll show you how to, you don't have to, but it is something I recommend. Really all you have to do to get the rotor out is just take off the two bolts that hold the caliper in. So you have this one up top right there and then this one down here. On the Tacoma, it's a 17 millimeter. I don't know if that's uniform across all Tacomas, um, and it's probably uh, not uniform across all vehicles, but the Tacoma is a 17 mil. So there's one more bolt that I forgot to tell you about. It's this bolt right here. You're gonna wanna take that off so that this whole hose is loose because you don't want the caliper just to be hanging there. You wanna set it up behind there and because this is bolted in right there, it's pretty rigid. And this tube right here, this brake line, doesn't actually flex. You have to take this bolt off so that you can have some flexibility right there to move the caliper. This is just an 11 millimeter bolt, so we'll take that out and then we can take the caliper and we can set it back here so it's not hanging.
Okay, now that's safe, so that's not gonna fall. It's not hanging by anything, so it's not gonna put any tension on the lines. Now you can take your rotor, and just slide it off. If the rotor's stubborn, just take like a rubber mallet or something and hit it a couple times at the base, and that should knock it loose. The calipers have been turned, so there's all just one smooth surface, no uneven edges or any warping or anything like that. Took a little bit of time, it's actually dark outside right now, but all that's left to do is put on the new brake pads, so let's do that right now. Okay, so the side with this little clip looking thing up here is gonna go on the right hand side. That's gonna go with this circular section going in towards the rotor. So that's just gonna slide into place like that. Then we'll take the other one right there. Same thing, this curved part right here, that's gonna go in towards the rotor. And then we're gonna take the pins, make sure that's all lined up. We're gonna slide the top one in first. Most brake pads, if they're the higher end brake pad, will come with replacement clips uh, and cotter pins for these pins up here. But mine are still in really good shape, so I'm just gonna reuse those. Just take that pin, slide that back in the way that we brought it out. Push it in there, make sure it's nice and secure. Make sure it's not going anywhere. That's good. And then we'll take the bottom one, slide that in part way, and then we'll take this clip and we'll put that between the brake pads. Then that pin goes through there, all the way through the bottom there, into the other side. And tap that in if you need to. And then each one of these side clips clips inside the holes right here on this side. So that's gonna go inside there. And then you might need to just get some pliers or something and help push that down a little bit and that should go into that hole on the side. Just like that. All right, so now the brake pad's in place, rotor's good, um, everything up here is secure, caliper's secure. We should be able to put the tire back on. I missed a clip. Make sure you don't miss any clips. It was the little cotter pin for the bottom pin that went through the caliper. I bet you guys thought I was gonna miss that, didn't you? Well, I didn't. It's because I keep my workspace organized. This is probably the least enjoyable part of the entire process. Trying to get a wheel this size back on. Perfect. She's on. Then we'll just take these lug nuts, cinch them down, make sure they're tight to spec, and we'll be done. I have brand new brakes that should last a while. So what I like to do with lug nuts is when I'm cinching them down, I like to get them nice and snug while the tire still moves freely. And then once I've got them pretty cinched down and I know that they're not really gonna go anywhere and the tire's gonna stay in place, then I'll set the tire down just a little bit. I'll lower the jack a bit so that it puts enough pressure on the tire to where it doesn't move, but I can still cinch down all the lug nuts. Okay, so that's pretty secure on there. Now we'll lower this to put pressure on the tire. Now there's just enough pressure on there to where it's gonna stay in place. Then when you're torquing these down, it's smart to do it in kind of a star pattern. That way you get them all tight. And then once I get them all done in a star pattern, I'll go all the way around and just make sure they're all secure. Okay, so that's everything we have to do on the outside. There's just one more thing we have to do inside the cab. Inside the cab, what you're gonna wanna do is just take your foot and pump the brakes. So it's really spongy right now, but you wanna pump those brakes until it starts to get more stiff, like that. And then once those are stiff, you now have brake fluid in the brake lines and your car's gonna stop which is important. That is everything you have to do to do a full brake job on your own, save a bunch of money. It only took me about three or four hours, but that's because I was filming and I had to take a couple Uber rides to get my rotors uh, shaved down and get all the, the uneven spots taken off. So if you were doing this by yourself, honestly, you could probably get it done in like 
hour and a half or two hours, maybe two and a half if it's your first time. So super easy job, you save a ton of money. Um, thanks a ton for watching guys, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. <laughs>